today. What I'm doing today is the black and white. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, this is uh, Bethany is 15, um, so uh, she's got pretty good skin, but we've got a couple of little. Uh, she's obviously covered up a couple of little spots here on the chin with some makeup. Um, show me the teenager that hasn't got a couple of spots. Uh, that, that's, that would be fairly remarkable. Um, but obviously she's got pristine skin given that she's only 15. Um, but even regarding, regardless of that, I'm just, just touching up a few of these little spots where she's got a bit of makeup that's gone a bit awry. Um, and I was just using the uh, the uh, spot adjustment tool there. The shortcut for the, the spot removal tool is the Q key. Um, and all you do is put the cursor over the dot and click and it will choose a nearby point and it will uh, remove that spot for you and it works pretty well. Um, if you find it's not chosen a good point you can click on that point and drag it somewhere else and it will use that other place instead. So although Beth's got great skin I am going to just do a little bit of skin softening so I'm going to right click on Beth in the film strip down here and I'm going to choose edit in Color Effects Pro 4. Um, if you haven't got this, uh, this step could be performed in Lightroom. There is a skin smoothing uh, tool uh, in the adjustment brush in Lightroom. I think I think Nick Effects does a, a, a better job. Um, but uh, but if you're careful with it, the skin smoothing in Lightroom is also very good. If you want to go about it that way, um, I do like Color Effects Pro. I, I've been I'm starting to sound like a Nick ad every time I do one of these shows, but I've got to tell you, ever since I bought these plugins, I've been using them a lot. They're really very good. Um, so uh, you can see I, I use this quite a lot. I use the Dynamic Skills software quite a lot. So when I fire up Color Effects Pro 4 here, by default, I seem to always have the, dyna the Dynamic Skin Softener. And if I just click the little eyedropper tool up here, I can say, right, here is uh, a sample of the color of Beth's skin. Uh, and the color reach, 25% seems like a pretty good number. That means it's going to choose colors either side of this pink that I selected, um, and uh, it will soften all those different colors. Now I have some numbers pre-dialed in here that I that I like because it starts out with stronger numbers than these. I think it starts out with 20, 10, 5, or something like that, um, and I find that a bit too strong. So what I do is I, I modify my numbers down to uh, 10, 3 and 2, which are pretty low numbers, but uh, if I just press the compare button, that's where the image started, and if I let go you can just see it just takes a little bit of the, the slight roughness off the skin and just smooths it a little bit. So even at those low numbers, um, it's still making, to my eye, quite a big difference. So I, I would say that is, uh, it's, it's a worthwhile difference, hopefully not too much. Um, so that's that's all I'm going to do in Color Effects Pro. I'm just going to click Save and send that straight back into Lightroom, and uh, uh, and then from there I'm going to take it uh, immediately into the black and white conversion process. So just give that a moment to catch up because Lightroom's just realising that I've saved a new version of that and it's updating its preview here. So now what we're seeing is the skin smooth version of this. Still got a bit of texture in the skin, but it's just generally looking a little bit smoother. As a a little mark on the forehead there that I might just take off and I think that dot there is actually sensor dust. My sensor is un uh, uncharacteristically clean at the moment. It's no normally my sensor is absolutely filthy but I don't see a lot of spots on this that, that aren't on, on Beth. So uh, let's zoom back out and um, a little mark on the hand as well there. Look, let's lose that one as well. And there's a couple of little moles and things that I might clear up. If this was a uh, an image for an advert or something like that, a paper ad, print ad, um, I might very well spend some time going around and cleaning up all sorts of things. Uh, there's a little tuft of hair coming out there that I'd probably take off. There's uh, some stray hairs back here that I might sort out and up here. Uh, you know, a couple of these little moles I might remove as well. But but. I really, I just want to race past all of that because I want to show you the black and white conversion because I think that's what really lifts this image beyond where it started. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to also address Beth's pose. She's got a very straight back. She's got lovely posture. That's very nice. But it, it's a little bit static. And uh, I'd, I'm not sure I like that static pose. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lean her forward as though she's looking at us quizzically. 
And that just gives it, because we've now got a diagonal between her shoulder and where her eyes are, and our eyes are going to follow the curve of this hair, and hopefully from our hand up towards her eyes again. So we're hopefully going to do this sort of little circle here with our eyes. Um, that, that little circle now is sort of on a slant. It gives it just a little bit of energy. It gives it a little bit of interest. And I think we can go in a little tighter than that still. I'm just letting it cut the top of the hair off just because, you know, I really want those eyes to be the main focus and I don't really need that extra space around the top. Um, remember, always crop like it was intentional. Um, don't You don't want to take off just a little bit. Take off enough to show that, that you knew you were doing it. Um, I think that works here. It's up to you whether you, like, you agree. Uh, so anyway, that's the sort of crop I'm going for. Just just a little bit of a quizzical tilt of the head. And we're doing that in post-production, not, not, uh, not when we were shooting. So I'm going to finally go to uh, Silver Effects. By, I'm going to right-click on the image in the film strip, choose Edit In, Silver Effects Pro 2. If you buy these plugins, of course, they will automatically, when you install it, uh, get installed into your Lightroom so you don't need to go and configure any plugins or anything the installer will do all of that for you so here we are in Silver Effects now if you'd asked me a year or so ago whether or not I thought a plugin that did uh, a black and white conversion was likely to be of much use I think I would probably have said no but I was so very wrong I really was so this is so this is our starting image. Uh, by the way, I had the background set to white when we came into the program. There's a little button up here with a little light bulb on it. It says change background color. Now the reason I had it set to white was because I wanted this image to become a high key uh, uh, black and white, and I wanted it to be, for the most part, close to white. And if you're working on a black background, you've got no perception of where white is. And if you're working on a grey background, you're going to have the same problem. You tend to find that, that what you think, what you perceive as white is sometimes grey. So in this case, where I want to do a high contrast, uh, sorry, a, a high key image, and I do want there to be white or near white in the image, I find it more useful to work on a white background because then I can see what's white. I can see that this down here is pretty darn close to white. And I can see that this up here is very grey. So it's got that by increasing the background colour, it's going to uh, alter my perception of colour enough to make me um, uh, dial in the tones that I really want, what, what I was really after. And, and that means I'll know it's going to look good if I put it on a white background web page. 500 Pix, which is my new favourite uh, photography hosting website, um, and, and uh, Flickr, both have white backgrounds. And, uh, you know, so you want to make sure that your pictures are going to look good in the places that people are going to see them. You know, on a white wall, maybe, if you're going to print it and frame it. So, you know, work with that in mind. Now, um, I don't want to go all the way around Silver Effects and how everything works, but uh, we've got, um, over here on the right-hand side, we've got some presets, uh, uh, and he starts off with all of them selected. I happen to know that the preset I'm after is in the Modern section, um, but we've got all sorts of presets in here. We've got Classics and we've got vintage uh, and you can mark some of these as favorite if you want and look uh, it doesn't just do black and white it'll also do toning and it will do borders uh, and we can do sort of uh, a vintage style yellowed vintage style what I'm after is one of these in the modern style and it's worth just before you go into the sliders on the right hand side it is usually worth just rattling through a few of these and seeing whether or not there's one that is close to what you're after. That one's not bad. I would lose the border, but it's not bad. I think the one that I was after uh, it was Full Dynamic Smooth. Now, the reason I picked this, um, this is a starting point. This is not my finished image. The reason I picked this one is I had that idea of that perfume bottle uh, image, um, and it has that slight softness to it. It's got a slightly dreamy quality to this preset, which I like. Um, it's not really high key quite yet, but it's getting there. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.